The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy says that truth is one of the central subjects in philosophy. It also is one of the largest. Truth has been a topic of discussion in its own right for thousands of years. And former Prime Minister Winston Churchill of Great Britain once said wittingly about truth, men occasionally stumble over the truth, but most of the time pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> what is truth to you? How would you define it for your life? In all honesty, that's a question that not the average Joe on the street thinks about very much. That's, you know, sometimes a discussion for the academics, the scholars, the philosophers, the theologians. But that question about what is truth to you does affect your daily life. And this is how so. Have you ever been in a situation where you threw up your hands and you're like, what do we do about this? What do we do? Whether it's with parents, marriage, finances, health, job change, whatever it might be that you're dealing with. What should we do? Or what do we believe, you know, about a situation? That is your, your situation where you're grappling with what is truth. Have you ever experienced vertigo before? Vertigo, I mean, it is a medical condition. It, it's where like everything is spinning out of control in, in someone's mind and it can just knock them out, you know, where they're just out of commission for a, a period of time where they need medical treatment for it. But vertigo, it's a delusion in the fact that somebody else in the same room with you, nothing is spinning, everything is fine. The opposite of vertigo would be equilibrium, where everything, there's a sense of certainty and security and order and balance. When it comes to truth, truth is like equilibrium. There is that sense of security and, and balance and order to things with when we understand and know and live by the truth. But our world is a little bit like vertigo when we grapple with what is truth and I don't know what to do in a certain situation and we don't know right from wrong and all this stuff. It's like our world is out of control and spinning. So this discussion today about what is truth has a lot at stake. And I hope that you'll stick with us today as we work through this and grapple with what is truth. Where we want to start with is this is understanding the type of world that we live in. We live in a world that is a melting pot of religions and ideology. There are a lot of religions out of there and everybody's got their own idea of how to make it in life or make it in this world and it's all mushed together. And it's nothing new to how we live today. Our world has been a melting pot like this since uh, the first humans ever walked the earth, we've had this melting pot that has come across us. This is why the Bible says, do not believe every spirit that is out there. We need to have a sense of discernment about all these voices that are out there. And here are some of these voices. This is the type of world we live in. There are three type of, uh, three type of, of things that are out there in the world. One, we live in a world of spirits, literal spirits. There's an unseen realm that we can't see. That's why it's unseen. And there's the God's Holy Spirit unseen. And then there are God's angels, his ministering spirits we can't see. And they are working to do good in our world. And then there's the other realm, the dark side of Satan, or some people call him the devil that works to do evil. And then the devil has his followers called demons. And the interesting thing is that this evil, the devil and his demons, march right alongside God, his Holy Spirit, and his angels. But the thing about it is they, they're trying to package their message to look like the truth, but it's really not. And so therefore you have this battle or this war for truth going on in this unseen realm. And where this unseen realm starts to become seen, 
is where these spirits begin to work through what's called a world of teachers. And a world of teachers are basically a world of influencers. People who are trying to influence you to believe like they believe, to, to believe their truth, to believe their religion, to believe their values, their ideas and stuff. And this comes through the form of parents, grandparents, comes in the form of, of school teachers, university professors. It comes in the form of motivational speakers, radio personalities, uh, TV personalities, elected officials, and, the, and religious instructors, people like me that might be ministers. Um, all these people uh, putting their thoughts out on the airwaves to try to influence and then we also live in a world of what's called ideology. And just the root of that, you know, is, is ideas. Where everybody's trying to throw out their ideas, their values, their principles, their beliefs, and trying to, to transfer them or to communicate them in such a way that this is good for you. This is the right thing for you if you will just adhere to this, this ideology that I'm passing along. And so it's, it's so easy in this world of, of, of spirits and, and influencers or teachers and ideology to get all confused where we're trying to wonder, what should we do? Back in 2002, I got on one knee and uh, proposed to my wife to ask her to marry me. That was the easy part. <laughs> the hard part was everything that went on before that. Prior to that, when I had these things stirring inside of me, you know, where I began to have this, uh, this flower of love began to grow in me, I began to consult with people, third parties that, you know, what should I do? Should I, this is how I feel about her. What, should I marry her? You know, what's the right choice? Because I wanted to just get married once, no divorce for the rest of my life, and I want to do it right. I went and talked to like my pastor. I, I visited with my parents. I visited with different friends, getting all their input. And uh, my, uh, my wife and I, Kathy, um, we, we even went to pre premarital counseling to get a professional counselor's advice. And one of the places I went to was the Bible, which I believe is a source of truth. And I went to the Bible and there was this passage of scripture that says this, show me the path where I should walk, O Lord, point out the right road for me to follow. I was swimming. What should I do? And I went to a place of truth to try to find some equilibrium in my world of vertigo at the moment. And off to the side, I wrote, Kathy, should I marry her? And so time went on and I was trying to figure out what to do. And eventually I came back to that source of truth. And again, God spoke where out of the book of Proverbs, God gave me this word, said, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Again, I received guidance and help from that source of truth that told me, God said, I'm blessing this, go for it, buddy. <laughs> Ask her to marry you. And so 11 years we've been, we've been married and I know that I, that I made the right choice because I searched for the truth. So what are you searching for today? What are you in the middle of? What is your situation that you're facing where you're asking, what should I do? I encourage you today to find the truth, to seek the truth. And I believe that that truth is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And I hope that you will know Christ and follow him with all of your heart today. As a matter of fact, as you're watching, there's a toll-free number. And if you want to call that number, we'll do whatever we can to help you on this journey to discover and to follow the truth of Jesus Christ in your life.